Have you ever tried working with 3D concrete reinforcement before? Although it's been pretty hard to do in the past, these days it's actually possible to make it fairly easy. Today we'll cover some reasons it hasn't been common practice and how new techniques can give us a better way of communicating concrete design in the future. So what is the current practice? Reinforcement is currently communicated as either formal drawings or sketches normally. Formal documentation of reinforcement is usually taken care of with schedules, standard details and 2D section cuts in tricky areas. It's usually considered too time consuming and difficult to model and it almost never is. Sketching's done with a pencil and paper, or more increasingly today with PDF markups in programs such as Bluebeam. Sometimes engineers will sketch details in CAD, but they'll never model it. So why is reinforcement not modeled? Up until recently, communicating reinforcement has been very hard. The only way to sketch by hand effectively is by cutting sections and that's a very time consuming process. It's hard to get your head around the different beam and sight levels and how each bar will fit with the others. It's hard to communicate it as well. Often not enough sections are cut to truly understand the 3D reality that will exist on the site. Formal documentation of those 2D sections also takes a lot of time. The marking up and checking process is labour intensive and current documentation software hasn't really bothered to support it to date, in my opinion. The newest software can do it in some respects, but it's still pretty slow and tricky to use. So once it has been documented, incorporating changes to the design can make it exponentially more time consuming to deal with because all of that 2D work has to be redone. So based on this experience, most engineers would tell you that they want to avoid 3D reinforcement at all costs. It's so hard to document it normally that you would think a 3D version would be a lot harder. However, I wouldn't say that that's necessarily true with today's software and techniques. And I'll come back and explain a bit more of my thinking on that later. So what could be future practice? It's definitely becoming easier to model reinforcement than it has been before. The software is getting better, although the leading programs are still a bit slow to make things simple or quick, in my opinion. There is one powerful way to generate structural geometry these days, however, and I believe it's ideally suited to reinforcement. That technique's called parametric design or generative design. So instead of prescribing geometry directly like you would when you draw something by hand or in CAD, you instead create a set of rules and allow the geometry to be drawn automatically. It's the first time it's been easy for an ordinary engineer to generate 3D reinforcement quickly and easily that I'm aware of. It also makes it just as easy to generate the formal documentation. One of the key advantages to generating reinforcement with this model is the ability to use an object model. So rather than generating loose bars that are individually hard to control, the bars can be locked into a relationship to a structural element such as a beam or a column 
then if the element moves or changes, the bars will move and change to suit based on the rules of their original placement. So what I mean there is if I draw a line, for example, representing a beam, and then I associate some bars with it, top, bottom, and legs and sidebars, then if I move the beam, the bars will follow. And obviously I can resize the beam and the bars will follow the rules of set out. And then if I want to add another beam in, obviously, I can just associate another beam line. And I can move that one around as well if I need to. Another reason modelled reinforcement might be adopted is the industry's steady march towards a future without drawings. Although most people think that's a long, long way off, there have already been trials, trial projects where drawings were banned and only the rebar models were used. Although this is likely to be a slow movement, it will probably happen eventually in my opinion. So to sum up, do you think that the advantages of 3D model reinforcement will convince the industry to adopt it? Or will it stay in the too hard basket as it has in the past? I suspect it will become more common in the near to medium future. It's already quicker, cheaper, and it communicates the design better. So to me, it only seems like a matter of time. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful, and we'll see you in the next one.